Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn a Pringles can into a lovely tree dice tower. Now, this is something that developed because my youngest wanted a dice tower of his own, and his only stipulation was is that it had to be a tree. So a tree it is. If you take a look over here, this is what it looks like. I'm going to show you how to do it. Forewarning, this is a longer video, so you can check the description below for some timestamps. For now, that's it for me, and let's get going. See you a little bit. Bye. First, you'll need a standard size Pringles can and cut an opening at the bottom with a sharp utility knife. You want the opening to be about two inches wide by one and a half inches high. Next, cut the top part of the can off around where the vitamin information is. You do not need to make this perfectly even or clean cut, but relatively level all around. Place the top portion to the side. Using a pair of scissors, cut jagged triangular shapes into the top of the can so it looks almost like pointed jack-o'-lantern teeth. Taking the top on some double corrugated cardboard, trace a circle from the inside of the can onto the cardboard and cut out two circles in total. With one circle, hot glue foam core onto the one side and when cool, remove excess foam, keeping the black paper on for now and place that to one side. With the other circle, remove the bottom to form a straight edge and then you will also need a 90 degree angle triangular piece of cardboard with the height measuring two inches and the length measuring one and a half inches. Hot glue this triangle with right angle against the side of the can, opposite the opening. When cool, place the cut circle inside so that the cut side is against the bottom of the can and mark on the cardboard circle where the triangular piece hits the cardboard top. Run a bead of hot glue on the circle and then glue this onto the diagonal piece inside the can. This will create a slope. You can also run a bead of hot glue where the bottom of the circle hits the bottom of the can to make sure it's nicely secured. Using large tongue depressor sticks, you are going to create the roll bars for the dice. You'll need to first cut a slit into the can on a diagonal with the top of the slit at a northeastern point and the bottom at a southwestern point. Insert the stick into the can through the slit and with a ballpoint pen, mark where the stick hits the other side of the can. Do be sure to check that the dice are able to roll on and off this stick and out the opening. You may need to shift the position slightly by angling up, down, forward, or back a little bit. When in the right place, mark and run the ballpoint pen over the mark a few times until you see a raised bump on the outside of the can. With your utility knife, cut a slit where the mark is. You can then reinsert your stick and mark the inside and outside where the edges of the can fall on the stick. Cut away the excess length of the stick, but be sure not to cut against the inside line or it will be too small to attach to the can. Insert and hot glue into place. You can take another stick or the like to help apply hot glue inside of the can where the stick meets the can. You will want to do these steps a second time, only higher up on the can and perpendicular to your first rolling bar. Be sure to do another test run with your dice to make sure everything rolls out appropriately and without issue. For further reinforcement and support for the lid, add in extra sticks to the sides of the can where you have space to place them. Do be sure to keep the length about four and a half inches in height and hot glue them into place. Moving on to the lid, you will need to remove the black paper and then create an opening in the center of the circle for the dice to go through. Draw in a square and then you can cut it out using a sharp utility knife. It'll help to cut diagonal slits on the inside of the square and then cut away the edges of the square. File away any rough edges of the opening and you can also use your low temp hot glue gun to fill in and smooth out the edges as well, making sure to use the tip of the nozzle. Taking a mechanical pencil, you can add in rings like a tree and shift over to a black ballpoint pen to enhance the grooves. Finally, take a stiff stencil brush to add further wood grain effects by running the brush around in a circular motion. Set the lid aside. To add a ramp to the bottom of the can to encourage the dice to roll out, take foam core and measure it to fit inside. You will need to bevel the edge and then attach using a hot glue to the cardboard on the inside part of the ramp. Once secured, you can then bevel the other side of the foam that is sticking out of the can to make sure to lay flat more easily. Next, you'll need to cover everything with a mix of two parts Mod Podge to one part black acrylic paint. Make sure you get this both inside and outside of the can, and don't forget to paint the lid which is still set to one side. To form the roots, you will need insulation foam board. 
Color is not as critical in this case as much as you want the one inch thick kind. Cut off right angle chunks of foam triangles. You can then use your utility knife to bevel and shape these triangles into root like shapes. You can even stack triangles on top of each other to form larger root bulges from the tree. When you are happy with the shapes, you can then attach them to the bottom of the dry can with your hot glue gun, being sure to keep the pieces level with the bottom of the can. You can also add smaller roots using smaller chunks of foam as shown here. For the branches, it is a similar approach, only you will need to cut out one inch by one inch strips and cut these strips at various angles to start forming the branches. Bevel off the corners of these chunks using a sawing motion with a utility knife as you work your way down to add texture. Once you have it rounded to your liking, you can add concentric circles at the top of the branches as you did for the lid. You may find it helps to remove a bit of foam on the angled cut for a closer fit around the bulge of the popsicle sticks. You can then glue these over where the sticks have been placed, being sure to fill in the gaps along the sides with hot glue and blend in the glue into the foam using the tip of your nozzle. If you want to add a knot hole to the tree, cut off strips of this foam and glue in a circular shape using your hot glue gun. For the roots, you'll want to take your utility knife and make thin shallow slashes to add texture to them as shown here. You can also edge off the opening for dice with foam as well and use your hot glue gun to fill in the gaps and add some texture to the front of the foam. For the tree bark, you'll want to use your low temp hot glue gun and run beads of glue along the can to create a bark like texture as you can see here. Be sure to use the nozzle of your hot glue gun to help spread the glue a bit and to keep your hand moving in a fluid motion. Using the same motion, bring some hot glue down onto the top of the roots and extend the texture and blend into the foam to the cardboard. Hot glue the lid into place on top and do the same bark technique on the inside of the point section at the top of this tree. Using double corrugated cardboard, mark off where the root edges are and ultimately you want to cut a shape that will look something like an extended half moon. Attach the tree to the base using your hot glue gun, being sure to fill in any gaps between the cardboard and the tree roots. To add edges around the dice tower base, you will want strips of foam core cut to a half inch in height and extended lengths beyond the measurement of your front and sides of your base edges. First add the front piece by hot gluing it to the cardboard. Then you're going to place another strip on one side and what you will need to do is a bevel cut around where the curve starts to begin on the back of this piece. Do the same thing to the other side and then you can cut away the excess foam core at the front of the piece. Make sure to secure the corners with some additional hot glue. You will then attach a piece of foam core to the back curved area and over the beveled area and using your utility knife, bevel cut away the excess foam to keep the rounded shape of the back. Be sure to reinforce with hot glue as well. Finally, take a wire brush and in long strokes add wood grain to the foam core strips by gently running the wire brush along the top. You can add knots of wood using a mechanical pencil and making oval shapes into the foam. Coat everything with a mix of Mod Podge and black in equal parts or use what you might have left from the first go around of a seal coat and allow to dry totally. The paints used are black, burnt umber, sunripe tomato, yellow and nutmeg brown, all from Apple Barrel. The first thing you want to do is cover the tree entirely in black and allow this to dry. When it's dry, what you're going to do is a heavy handed dry brush using the burnt umber and you're going to cover 70 to 80% of the tree. Make sure you avoid the inside of the knot and you're going to want to allow this to dry completely. Moving to a cosmetic wedge, you will next sponge on sunripe tomato. For this technique, see the video linked above. Do not be afraid of color in this case, it will be toned down, but it is important for the depth of color in the bark. You want about 30 to 40% coverage with the sponging and allow it to dry slightly. You're going to do the same with yellow, but more of a 30% coverage again with the sponge and allow it to dry totally. You're going to then move on to coffee latte and you will dry brush this color onto the top of the stump of the tree where the concentric circles are as well as the same for the cut sections of the branch again where you've had concentric circles. Finally, you will dry brush the nutmeg brown over the rest of the tree but be sure to avoid the knot and spots where you just added coffee latte. 
For the base, you want to put a layer of the Vallejo Earth texture in Dark Earth. While I do have it shown with having this on the ramp area of the base, skip that area and you're going to focus this on the open spots between the tree roots and the back curved portion of your base. For the foam core wood strips, you'll want nutmeg brown, graphite, and olive green. First cover with nutmeg about 70% with a heavy dry brush. Then when dry, add on the graphite with a lighter dry brush and finally add on olive green doing the same. When totally dry, you will do a wash in Citadel's Agrax Earth Shade on the tree and Newland Oil on the foam core wood strips. Allow these to dry completely. Using Sunkissed Peach, dry brush on top of the branches and the stump of the tree to highlight the concentric circles. For the moss and lichen and slime, I'm using Paint Effects from Vallejo. First, I added the environment slimy green into the more tucked in spots where branches met the trunk and the same for the roots as well as around the edge of the top of the stump area. Let that dry and then move on to environment, moss, and lichen. To apply this, I used a stencil brush and stippled around random points of the tree as you will see on a tree naturally. You can also use a point of reference photo for this part if it helps. Finally, I used the environment crushed grass, which has a mossy look to it as well, so I applied this thickly to various points where I wanted to have a bed of moss established. This will darken as it dries, so do not let that color scare you. For the front area of the ramp, I wanted to give it a mossy look. I do have these moss rocks on hand that I found from Dollar Tree, and basically I just peeled this moss off the rock. However, later I found this different product, which I would recommend that you use instead to save time. Using Mod Podge, be sure to have a thicker layer on the cardboard as you apply the moss. As you attach it, it does help to add Mod Podge to the top as well. This is where the moss sheet is much easier, and it would be less piecing together, and you can cover more area at once with less Mod Podge. In the end, you should have the moss fully covered and in place, and you want to make sure you let everything dry completely. Using chocolate brown, marsh green, and kiwi, paint a moss-like look to the texture of the Vallejo Dark Earth already there. These spots are getting covered with foliage, so it's more a matter of masking the base. Start with a marsh green, then stipple brown and kiwi on after and let it dry. You actually do want these colors to muddy together a little bit. Now we will add the plastic aquarium plants. I have a large collection and used a variety of shapes and colors. First start with one that is more like branches and leaves and place it around the base of the tree as if they are new shoots. You can even add these to the branch stumps if you'd like, but be sure you create a pilot hole first before hot gluing them into place. Next use a grass-like style plant and a similar approach. Scatter it around the base and the kind that I had was in a circle, so what I did was basically just cut tufts from it. Finally, go to your fuller style plants and place those in the open spots of the base area to create a lush forest cover. Variety helps in this case and be sure to hot glue everything into place. It also helps to tuck some foliage into random spots just to heighten the interest of the piece. To give a smoother flow out of the ramp as it was now moss covered, I added a clear bit of plastic that you can get from vegetable and fruit containers and covered it from the inside to poke just outside of the opening of the dice tower. Hot glue it into place on the inside of the can and then what you do in the front is you will secure it with two long straight push pins and put one in each corner to secure it down. Then what you are going to do is you're going to take one more layer of Mod Podge, apply this to that clear strip you've just placed in of plastic, as well as one last layer onto the top of the moss area of the ramp and the base pad. When that is dry, you can then take Krylon Max Crystal Clear to seal the rest of the piece. And when that is dry, your dice tower is ready to be used. Thank you so much for joining me in this project. You can also reach out if you have any questions by emailing me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com or comment below. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit that like button. Have a great day and enjoy the bloopers. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Forgive the voice. I have a cold, so it's kind of dropped my voice a little bit. 
Oh god, this is gonna be so weird. <laughs> Ring light is back. New one. So much easier with this darn thing for lighting. Now that I have it figured out, here's to hoping it actually keeps working. Girl can help, right? <sighs> you're gonna invade, aren't you? You're, yeah, you're gonna, come here. Come here, come here. Obligatory Hemingway appearance. You wanna help with this? You wanna do the intro? You can do the intro. No? <laughs> Just now I got cat hair all over myself. Uh, oops. Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm like, dee -dee. no. Hi, and how? Here we go again. I'm getting nasally because of the cold. <laughs> For picture. Ta -da -da. There's nothing here. There will be something there. Right now, I'll just pet open blank space. <laughs> That always weirds me out, and I think it's weird that I'm just like, yeah, over here, because, you know, there's going to be something there, and I just naturally know to do that now. 